Now to diagnose our mycotic infection, we're going to have to have examine the patient's samples to diagnose as well as to identify. And so we're going to have to uh, stain the specimens and look at them under microscopes and use specific cultures and specific biochemical and serological tests. To control these mycosis infections, usually an immunization is not going to be effective. Uh, although there is work on coming up with some vaccines for certain infections. Prevention is pretty much limited to reducing contact with spores by using mask and protective clothing, but sometimes they have to surgically remove the damaged tissues. The drugs that are used target the plasma membrane, the cell wall, cell division, as well as synthesis of the nucleic acid. Now, how are fungal disease organized? Usually according to type, the level of infection, and the degree of pathogenicity. The true pathogens are systemic. They're also subcutaneous, where you've got a puncture wound that introduces the fungus down deeper into the subcutaneous tissues. They can be cutaneous and only involve the stratum corneum and the upper epidermis, or they can be superficial mycoses that are just extremely shallow colonizations in the epidermis. There are also the opportunistic mycosis. Now, in the systemic or the deep mycosis, the fungus will disseminate from the lungs and other sites into circulation. And when you have fungemia, this leads to infection of your brain and your kidneys and other organs. Now looking at systemic infections by the true pathogens, this is restricted to the endemic regions of the world. And you get infection when the matter that has the mitospores is disturbed and the spores germinate in the lungs. So then infection can become systemic. The spores uh, also may be inoculated into the skin and all these diseases result in immunity. The subcutaneous mycoses, and you see two of those at the bottom, are when the fungus is transferred directly into traumatized skin, and this will involve tissues within or just below the skin. And they are inhibited usually by higher temperatures in the blood and viscera, so they don't go deeper, but the diseases are progressive. The cutaneous mycosis are confined to the keratinized epidermis that you find in your skin, your hair, and your nails. And we call these uh, dermatophytoses. And this would be your ringworm and your tinea. And there's 39 species in this genera. And they're very closely related and similar morphologically. The causative agent of the ringworm, though, will vary from case to case. The natural reservoirs are humans, animals, and soils. And the spores, the dermatophyte spores, are very hardy. Um, if there's a braided skin, they can um, invade, and also intimate contact promotes infection. Uh, usually, it's a long infection period, and you have localized inflammation and allergic reactions to the fungal proteins. This is a table of the different types. And again, you see ringworm or athlete's foot that can be in your hair, skin, or nails. If it's in your scalp or nails, but not your nails or your skin, or it can be your skin and hair, nails and not your hair. Uh, in the scalp, it's called tinea capitis. And hair can be lost. If it's on your body, it's tinea corporis, and you have inflamed red ring lesions. Um, and this is why it's called ringworm, because it's a ring, but it's not a worm, it's a fungus. And you can see these here, the ring. Um, in the groin, uh, which we call jock itch, is tinea cruris, 
if it's in your nails um, of your hands and feet and it distorts the nail bed, tinea unguinum, unguinum, sorry. And then in your foot, tinea pedis. And you get this for from walking on public surfaces, like in a um, locker room floor and it gets on your digits and on the soles of your feet. can be quite uncomfortable. To diagnose it and treat it, the treatment is going to be low and slow. A lot of times involves topical antifungal agents for several weeks and then maybe even taking um, orally um, Lamisil or something for one to two years. UV light treatments have some benefit and then a gentle debridement of the skin. Now your superficial mycosis are more cosmetic and the skin will become mottled um, and it just interferes with the production of melanocytes and you get these white colored or colored masses um, on your skin. So dermatophytic fungi attack the blank in the blank. Can you figure it out? They attack the keratin that's in your skin, hair, and nails.